Hello, I am Chema Cabrero and I am in charge of the Military Vehicle Modeling Department. We are going to start a series of videos showing complete painting processes and effects using the Vallejo ranges. In today's video, we will talk about the Model Air range of acrylic paints, their properties, and practical applications. The Model Air range offers the modeler a whole series of color references and sets that are especially useful due to their formulation and shades. The whole selection in this range presents the modeler with themed references and paint sets, with historically accurate colors for vehicles, AFVs, figures, airplanes, textures, and effects. In this case, with the model showcased in this series of videos, Vallejo offers a thematic set with eight references for painting Soviet vehicles and their camouflage during World War II. And speaking of Soviet and Russian vehicles, this set contains eight green-toned references used from World War II to the present day. Model Air also offers the modeler a selection of colors to facilitate specific painting processes, in this case, tank tracks and rubber wheels. Sets are also available to reproduce wood and its texture. Some effects that might seem complicated have their painting processes simplified thanks to the selection of shades in our sets, which include step-by-step -step instructions showing how to use them. The AFV system set comes in an 8ml format and offers a specific selection to create volume, light, and shadow effects. The model air range is formulated for direct use with an airbrush. It matches FS, RAL, RLM, BS, and others, allowing us to paint vehicles of various nationalities with historical accuracy. Their adherence and formulation allows us to represent further wear and weathering effects using washes, filters, and pigments. Their versatility for use as a base color and on camouflage schemes offers many possibilities for the modeler, both in historically real or fantasy projects. We can create dirt and dust effects over model air paints by using pigments and fixing them with airbrush thinner. To do this, we must wait 24 hours for the base coat to dry completely. On models painted with model air, we can use masks and stencils with no issues. In this case, we have used a reference from the Vallejo stencils range, creating defined spots and lines typical of this characteristic camouflage. Their density is ideal for precision work at close range to the surface of the model by using an appropriate air pressure. In this case, we have used photographic references to establish the shades of model air best suited to represent a weathered desert camouflage on an SU-100. A mixture of airbrush thinner and Vallejo pigments has also been used to reproduce dust accumulations on the vehicle. There are several techniques we can use to represent a sense of volume, light, and shadow on a model. For this, it is advisable to choose a selection of colors within the same hue scale from dark to light. We will outline some of these techniques in basic terms depending on their concept. On three turrets painted with a green 4BO base, we will proceed to represent three basic techniques enabling us to create volume effects on them. As they present the same volume, we can easily appreciate the difference in technique once the appropriate highlights have been applied with model air. On this turret, we will proceed with a simple and quick highlighting concept, illuminating the central area of panels and parts with a lighter tone than that of the base. Apply thin layers and focus on certain areas. With another lighter shade, we will apply a new highlight on these areas of the model. The end result offers an appearance of volume accentuated by the transition between light and shadow. Even though it is not a realistic lighting concept, it does not pose too many problems in its execution and the end result is attractive, with an interesting light and shadow effect that has been well known for many years. We can further emphasize some areas with the lighter model air tones. We are now going to show the concept of zenithal light. That is, we start from the idea of a light projected from above the model and this will illuminate the upper parts, progressively darkening towards the lower areas. 
We must be careful in the application of the tones so that the transition from light to shade is not too abrupt. The smoother the transition, the more realistic the final effect will be. We will focus again on the upper parts to reinforce this apparent light effect. We will now proceed to explain the concept of color modulation. This method is an artistic interpretation of volume, light, and shadow on an object, working on the effects of changing its tone by sections, emphasizing the more obvious transitions and changes in shades. Unlike modeling and its transitions of light, shadow, and semitones, modulation uses complementary tones or mixes with more evident transitions and greater contrast. We proceed to apply an initial layer progressing from light to shadow. We will intensify the light contrast by defining areas and elements. Masking tape will be used to separate some areas from others. This method allows us to reinforce any changes to the light plane and their volume. By working in areas, we will see how the model gains volume and definition. Let's not forget that this is a free interpretation of an artistic device applied to modeling. In some areas, we will paint small elements with a brush in a lighter tone, accentuating the supposed reflection of light on them. The points of light are concentrated on edges and relief details on the surface. Despite showing a high contrast, all elements will be harmoniously integrated with subsequent washes, filters, and weathering effects. The final appearance using this technique is very characteristic, with its contrasts. We are going to use the zenithal light technique on our protagonist, although we will use some elements of color modulation to make it more attractive, too. We will start this process by spraying model air from above. Now we will create transitions from light to shadow in a progressive way. We shall work with quick and smooth passes, using directly the model air references undiluted and avoiding accumulations of paint. Using the same technique, we will paint the hull of the tank, creating these illumination and volume effects painting the small details with a brush. The resulting smoother contrast the model presents now with our subsequent final steps. The final result offers beautiful volume effects with progressive highlights and shadows.